Right guys, so today I want to introduce to you our latest version in our clamshell tent range and it's the AX27 rooftop tent. Now, we always are listening and as you guys are touring around, we're always making improvements on products and that's the main thing with any of the products. Now, the concept of this tent was developed over three years ago and I designed these tents with their easy slot rails and extrusions on them to be a tent that is focused at strength and to simply to be able to attach multiple products, bracketry, accessories onto it. Acting almost like a roof rack for your vehicle to be able to bolt things onto. Um, and we've stuck with that same theme and have just made it better. Now, as far as it goes, the tent is fully extruded alloy, um, still on this composition, running your different slots on it. The main thing I want to go into, and most of the specifications on this tent are going to be listed on our website. So if you want the measurements exactly and accurately, as well as it in imperial and metric formats, refer to our website at thebushcompany.com. Today's video is more about getting into the simplicity, the practicality, and the use and strength of this tent. So coming in at a roughly 2.25 meters long by 1.4 meters wide and in a closed position 278 millimeters tall. This tent in an open position on the internals are about 1.7 meters tall with roughly 1.75 meters of total open height. So that is a huge amount of space and really is a cavernous area. I mean I'm near six foot, I can stand inside the tent and literally get changed or get dressed inside of it. So it's a massive tent. Now in its full powder coated back finish um, as well, just protecting all the alloy on the extrusions and on the tent frame itself. And you'll notice along the top end we have a full length over two meter long rail and for additional strength that is fully welded into position. We've got a fully checker plate alloy and this is with black powder coating on the top of this, just keeping it all protected and strong and um, waterproof on that top layer there. Now, as far as the frame itself goes, the frame is made from an extruded alloy and the great thing about extrusions and, and playing with extruded alloys is the ability to mix your different steels or aluminiums or whatever your metals might be, to word it basically, um, to give you the ultimate in tank style strength and still elasticity on the on the material. So one, you can save weight, but you can also get the strength right up there. And that's what we've done. Now with these, we've got a double skinned corner section as well, which allows and has the slot receivers for your bolts to slide in. On the corners of these tents, we have now got a supplied stainless steel receiver for your spring rods where you attach your rain flies to. So a full stainless steel receiver, just gone with that extra strength. All of our latches, our handles, our ladder mount receivers, as well as the hinges are all made from stainless steel. And we have designed these in-house and we, yeah, basically not as a buy-in product, but as a properly form functioning product to keep and give us the design that we wanted and the spec that we wanted on these. So great over center latches, locking it into position with two points of securing there and with your four bolts securing it down to the frame. Not just that, but I've also incorporated the holes on either side for a padlock. So you can literally store hunting rifles, sport shooting rifles, um, fishing rods, a whole heap of storage. If you want to keep it safe and out of the way, you can lock it there and treat this as a safe lockable area. Now on that as well, notice, and I'll just slide the tent to the side here. One of the biggest features with our tents is the design incorporated years ago is the easy slot attachment rails that we have on this or easy slot extrusions. Now what that allows us to do is run an M8 bolt in these slots to attach a variety of brackets and I'll go through brackets and different accessories brackets for these tents at towards the end of the video but a double layer there a single layer on top we even use it for mounting on our gas struts now large gas struts um, the gas struts come from gas struts Australia and these are actually exported back to South Africa and then added on the tents and we then bring them back this side stainless steel bracketry holding them in place and with a uh, peephole there in case you need to get access or gain access to the nut on the inside. These are come pre-mounted in the correct position for you just to simply attach your strut onto the side of this. Now getting onto the tent itself, being gas strut assisted, these tents are super easy 
to use and open and close. Designed to carry over 200 kilos on the roof in a closed position um, and 50 kilograms that still allows you to open up the tent with 50 kilograms on the top. The gas struts are really heavy duty and offering you just that extra hand and helping you lift it up. So pop the two latches open like that. You simply have to just give it a bit of a nudge and the tent itself will lift itself, making it easy for anyone to use. Your bungee cord, which holds the canvas in place, just helps pull and tuck the canvas into position um, when you are closing it. You simply grab that and pull that down over the base of the, the tent canvas there. Now, on these tents, they come standard with our large rain fly. Um, we'll open that up in a second, and on the inside of these tents, is where all of our hardware is usually kept. So as far as the ladder goes, so the ladder hardware will be like this. They come with and supplied with a big telescopic ladder as well as a extension pole. And I'll show you the use of those next. Now, let me get into the tent. Two big YKK zippers. And this is what is securing the outside canvas. So the one big thing with this tent is that it is a fully dual layer tent or a two skinned or double skinned canvas tent. Now, originally I introduced the double skin concept was for the colder climates, basically being North America and Europe where you get a lot of snow um, just to act as a thermal layer. It does help in the warmer climates as well, especially when you wanna have a bit of a later sleep in the morning. It keeps the heat loading off the side of the tent quite a lot. Um, it's a great, great feature on these. And what we've done with this on this tent is we've gone for two 320 gram layers of our ripstop canvas. Now this is the canvas we've been using for years. It's a polyester canvas, which is full resin, acrylic resin infused canvas, basically giving it that waterproofing layer, as well as a mildew protection as well. So you're not gonna get um, your mildew or your mold penetrating the canvas. It actually, if it was to get mildew or mold on it, it just sits on the outside layer, which can easily be wiped off and cleaned. Now on this, I just want to get to the inside, first of all. So spring rods inserting in the stainless steel corner pieces there. I pull that up into place and simply attach that spring rod into the stainless steel eyelet that is on the end of the rain fly. Now the whole concept with a rain fly is just that, was to keep the rain, the majority of the rain, off the tent and off the windows, so that you can still have airflow inside the tent when it is raining. The other thing is, when you have your ladder attached to the rear or to the side and you're entering or getting out of your tent, you actually have a bit of protection from the elements on that as well. Now, looking at the entrance of this tent, we have got right here at the door. So the one canvas is up. Second layer is we hit the mesh. Now this mesh is actually manufactured in, in Japan. It's a great mesh. A lot of the high-end um, users in the industry use this mesh. It's a great midgy proof mesh, um, giving us that, just that extra protection layer from those small little gnats and small midges that you get out while camping in the bush in certain countries. Now, just zip that up. Now, all of our layers of the canvas or of the tent are able to be rolled away and tucked up into position. And we actually have got these toggles and clips throughout the whole tent to store everything nicely away. So I'll just roll that up and we'll start gaining access into the side of this tent now. So that's the mesh layer up there. As far as the internal layer goes, and this is the one that we most commonly use, it's, an it's another layer of full canvas on the inside, give showing you that full two skin. So two layers of 300 gram ripstop canvas. Now on the top of the tent, Right at the top here, we have an additional, what we like to call the condensation vent or the airflow vent, especially when it's really cold and you have everything else zipped up and you're trying to stay warm. Keep that open. It allows all the moisture from your breath to actually escape the tent so that you're pre um, preventing or it's helping a lot with the condensation of water vapor on the inside of the tent to try and prevent that. So getting onto that, I'll just access the side over here as well and open this up. So really simple, big, YKK zippers, and that's the, the big thing we use on the tent. We only use YKK zippers. YKK, as most of you know, is the best. You, you really don't get much better than that. We've been using them for years. So continue with our YKK zippering throughout the tent. 
toggle that off, clip it into position. There we go. And the side over there. Now, most often, as far as the outside layers of canvas goes, those basically you can roll up and forget about them. When you have severe weather, big rainstorms and so on, that's when you would use it. Most of the time you're just using the internal two layers, so the mesh layer and the internal canvas is the main uses. Now zipping this out the way, the side doors actually roll to the rear, the mesh does anyway, so that rolls over to the rear like that, and we'll clip that into position. There we go, holding that out the way, and then find the zipper, there it is. This is gonna gain us access into the tent from the side. So this too can roll up, and it rolls down and out the way like that. You've got access to the toggles, and we simply roll it to the bottom like that. Now there's a very important reason why I have my internal canvas rolling to the bottom. And that I'll be able to explain to you when I'm lying inside the tent and we're gonna go through how the airflow works. So there's actually a reason why that. Because it rolls through in such a nice way and you can actually tuck it in, it's not in the way when you're climbing into the tent. You simply climb up the ladder either on the side or the rear of the tent and you can literally climb inside of the tent like that and over that canvas. Now, while I'm in here, let's discuss that canvas on the inside while we're on the topic. So the big reason why I have this canvas zipped in and rolling down is I used to hate it when camping and you have a fly sheet open or a canvas open and the cold weather comes in at night and your face ends up freezing. So this is to allow for airflow adjustment is the main reason. So the positive is I can literally zip it down a third of the way and have that down there and still get beautiful airflow and cross ventilation through that top off. Or bring it down low and when I'm in a sleeping position, for example down there, I'm still not having my face getting really, really cold. So you're able to get that airflow over the top and onto the top of your body and on top of your blankets instead of like directly on the face. And it just gives you that extra airflow and adjustability of airflow. That's really, really important. As far as the insides of these tents go, we've got two big pockets down either side. So four pockets in total of, at your foot storage um, down the bottom end. Also on the corners, at the back corners on the high side is a water bottle holder for those times when you want to get a bit of water at night. It's nice and easy, quick access storage. And we've mounted those up a little bit so that you can still get a pillow and your head on the pillow and the water bottle actually sits out of the way of your head. So you're not going to be bumping your head on the water bottle at night. As far as on the roof goes, these roofs, like always, we use our marine grade carpeting throughout the whole uh, top of the tent. One, it gives you good insulation property and two, keep it simple process, right? The KISS principle is it's so easy to stick other projects on there, Velcro products on there, just have a really easy workable surface that is easy to clean as well. So as far as our magazine organizers go on the roof, these are there for storage, whether you want to, the centers is perfect for storing like flip flops or slops when you're climbing into the tent at night. Also just magazines, um, reading spectacles, you name it, torches, head torches, GoPros, phones. A lot of storage, two pockets there, two pockets above it, and these are Velcroed into place. So if you don't like them there, or if you wish to move them, or if you wish to purchase additional pockets, you can, and these simply Velcro into place like that and are removable. So just keeping it really simple, you can always interchange those as well. As far as power goes on the inside of these tents, we've actually got a double power point. So there's one on the left side and one on the right side as well. Now, big focus of this is allowing a lot of charging points. So on both or each of the power panels, we have got a twin USB outlet. So you can literally charge two devices on the left side and an additional two devices on the right hand side as well, over there. Now, also note that I've spec these up to 2.4 amps each. So great for that fast charge, charging your GoPros, charging your mobile phones, iPads, tablets, you name it. Um, also in each of these is a SIG outlet. And now the SIG outlet is great extension there for running extra 
lights, if you want to run a 12 volt electrical blanket, or if you want to run a fan for us in the hotter climates, great place to plug a fan in. Also notice in the center between you, I have got a resettable thermal fuse that you can actually reset if that blows, if you're drawing too much power. Now that is all connected to an Anderson plug underneath the tent. So simply run your Anderson power from your vehicle, from a dual battery or secondary battery into that, and you can have full access to power on those. Now, one of the big things with these tents was the new um, light. And let me show you the light. So on these, they are a battery powered portable light. Now, there's a big push why I've gone for this. One is easy chargeable anywhere, so USB outlet there, and that's on the light. Now, with the light itself, it comes with a backing plate, which is magnetic, as well as magnets on the back of the light itself. And what we've done is attach Velcro on there. You can now move your light into any position you want to. So if you want it high, or if you're sleeping with your head down the bottom and you want your light down the bottom, you simply Velcro it onto the roof in any position where you would say choose, okay? For example, so let's say we're gonna put it over there, done. Now, as far as the light itself goes, it does come with its three colors like usual. So we've got the white, the amber, as well as the red for different insects and, and, and nighttime like that. The other thing which is great about this light feature is that you can actually take it out with you and use it as a torch at night. So simply have it on the top magnetic. You wanna use it at night, you wanna get out to the, go to the toilet for example, you can grab the light there and you can go walking around camp or find something and shine around the tent um, or around campsite. So gone with a removable battery light. Now you can charge those with the USBs inside the tent or charge it in your car, either or. It's all included. I'll just put that back up top where we usually store them. There we go. So that's the, the new light feature on the inside of the tent. Now let's discuss the mattress as well as the underlay inside the tent. Mattress. Now I have been listening to a lot of you guys which use our products and are adding different comfort ideas on top of the mattresses and so on because I've always gone with a super high density foam mattress. The reason why is there's nothing worse than sleeping through a mattress and sleeping onto the hard bottom of the tent. So on the AX27, we have got a dual layer mattress. And this is an 80 millimeter thick mattress with two 40 mil layers that we've glued together. The gray is our standard super high density foam and the yellow being the soft foam. So now you can simply flip your mattress over, giving you a different comfort level for sleeping. So that's one nice new feature. The big waterproof mattress cover, like always on these, easy to clean. You can take them out, strip the sponge out of it if you want to hose it down, just to clean the mattress cover once in a while. And because of the material on this, this polyester, it's actually really easy to sweep off as well if there's dust or dirt inside the tent. Now underneath that, we've got our layer or our underlay mat. Now this is a, one is a condensation layer mat. It allows breathability between the aluminum frame and the mattress as well. And we've been using this concept for years and we find it works extremely, extremely well. Also really nicely trimmed off there with your edge piping and to keep everything in place and shaped to suit the tent as well. Now, as far as your condensation vent goes on the top, you can open the condensation vent to allow the airflow in and close it off. It is fully enclosed with canvas on the inside and we've got a Velcro runner just sealing that off. While I'm in the back of the tent and looking to the outside, just to explain the rain fly on these. Now, the, for the rain fly, because it's such a large rain fly, and the benefits to that are massive. You have got the protection from the rain, but it's giving you huge shade on the tent itself. So giving you that extra coverage, um, you know, in the hot mornings maybe, is we do supply these extra rain um, or storm straps as we call them for when the big weather's coming in. These simply clip into place on those toggles and you hook the bottom end into where the padlock section would be. Now what these allow us to do is put tension on the actual rain fly itself. And you don't have to run it every single night. This is literally just for when it's storming, but you can pull these down and adjust them just to firm up the canvas and to firm up the actual rain fly itself in those very, very windy nights. Also getting onto that point is if you would like to, you can remove the whole rain fly itself. So I'll simply take these off and show you how we go about doing that. 
So to remove the rain fly, and the reason why I've made it removable is in some places or in some seasons of the year, there are huge winds in various places in the world. And to really have a tent that is more silent but still giving you the benefits for 90% of your trip being a large tent, a big rain fly and so on, we've decided to make it removable like we've done with most of the tents. So if that was the case there, and we simply took those down like that, you come to the side of the tent, you unclip it from its buckle, so that can simply unclip, and you can slide it out of the rope slide all the way of it. Now, I'm not gonna pull the whole thing out, but to show you, it simply slides out and you can take it off. The tent will still be fully waterproof, being dual layered, it's still fully waterproof without the rain fly on there. So this is just for those really heavy windy sections or when you're touring in a very windy season, then you can remove that if you choose to. I'll just pull that back in. Very simple to go back, clip the buckle in, and you can hook this into position it's got a hook on the um, on the reinforced gussetry on the inside there and simply tension it up. Right, now as far as the inside of the tent goes, well, what it comes with rather is it also comes with this, uh, this manual adjustment pole and all this is mainly for is if you ever have to break a gas strut on the side of the tent over there literally you're driving to a embankment and it breaks off. Now, I've personally driven into embankments before and they are extremely, extremely difficult to break off and very, very strong. That's why we still mount our gas struts on the outside of the tent. It's a tried and tested recipe that really works. Also, it allows us for more space on the inside of it and giving us more room and one less pinch point for the canvas. So a heap of pros that we find running on the outside of the tent. Now as far as these go, the main reason is for the snow conditions. So if you are in the countries where it snows and it gets cold, you can prop that up on the base of the floor and on the underside of the roof. And especially because we're bolting solar panels and other products on the roof, snow is going to gather on the top of the roof of these tents. And if it does gather, these are just giving you that extra support, being heavier than the 50 kilograms once all the snow's on there, the tent will slowly start closing down in the colder climates, where that um, manual pole just stops that from happening. Very simple and very easy to use. Now that we generally fold away and tuck it behind the headboard Right, so now let's have a look at the ladder that comes with these tents. So, as far as ladders go, we've gone with a telescopic ladder. This is a very generic ladder and available really around the world. But the biggest reason why we've gone with these is because of the various heights that vehicles are. So whether you have a, a standard vehicle, a two, four, six inch lift, or a high troop carrier, or even a truck, the ladder can extend up to 2.6 meters high and is really, really universal and folds out small. Now with that, it's full aluminum construction. What we've added on is our rear bracketry. And this is so that it secures the ladder to the tent. You don't want to be hanging off that, but purely securing it to the tent. So if you do lean back or fall away, the ladder does not come away from the tent. So that effectively can open up and extend out into position like that, all the way up, and then simply close it down like that and like that. Helps if I get my fingers on the right ones. There you go, so that can hook into position on there. Now included in the ladder bag is our universal mounts as well as your second ladder mount bracket. One of these that comes spare, you can either attach to the right or the left hand side. Now the universal fitting kit will fit 95% of vehicles or load bars, roof racks and so on. Um, you might need to tweak this or if your car's a lot different, always get some custom brackets made. Now on this, these will attach to the large foot. Now the positive is the foot rail or foot extrusion runs virtually the whole length of the tent, over two meters long. And it gives you three mounting access points for M8 bolts. So you can have offset to the side, straight underneath with a U-plate there, or off to the inside as well. Now as far as closing up the tent, there is a heap of space inside the tent itself, over 120 millimeters of space. So great for storing your ladder, your bedding and your duvets and pillows and everything else you would like inside the tent. For closing up, simply crisscross your rain fly over, bring up the bungee and that's going to assist with folding in the canvas. Now where it comes into its own with the multi-tiered loops on the strap, 
is you can pull it down and work your way up the strap like this. Bearing in mind that I'm mimicking if you were on a ladder right now. Long, extend your arm all the way out and simply tuck in your canvas like that. Now it's a good idea to leave some of the canvas zipped down so that the air can escape from the inside of the tent as well. Bring that down, the large over center stainless steel latches, simply clip into place. Now, as I said before, we want to look at how the strength is made. And we've done something a little bit different today. I've actually got a raw frame before fitting right over here in the showroom and on the floor over here. So let's go through this and I just want to show you how strong and how robust these are, these are made. So running our full extrusion, you can see the multiple gussetry that is welded into place. Note that yes, we've cut out slots and so on, not just for looks, but also for the function of reducing weight inside of the tent as well. 25 mil cross tubing running through the whole thing. And that effectively is where you can attach your fan bracket onto um, with your ceiling liner. As far as the bottom goes, We've got fully gusseted extrusion rail down the side, just boxing in that section, making it ultra strong. A good lip on the tent as well, giving you that runoff. So when your canvas is attached to that, you have the water naturally running off that. And the full welded in foot extension. So there's nothing bolted into place here. It's all fully welded. Also the corners offering your double skin corner piece, giving you extra strength on the corners with the stainless steel bolt in receiver for your um, rain fly rods on there. Now all of that gets dressed with the floor sheet and the roof sheet and then obviously all the rest of the carpeting and powder coating. But I just wanted to show you how this is compromised. Most of the steel on this is two and a half mil thick extrusion um, around where the slots are, running a two mil thick in many other places and a 1.6 mil thick there. Now the biggest thing when it comes to extruding and owning the dies and designing the dies for extrusions is that it's not just off the shelf aluminium that anyone can get hold of and they can fold. This is a specific recipe or a specific mixture of alloys giving us the ultimate strength on every single cross member and every single gusset and welded in part. Now let's have a look at some accessories. On these tents, being a tent that is fully um, customizable as far as accessories go. We've got a wide range of accessories. Now note while we're looking in, in here as well is our double stainless steel hinges and this is the Bush Company's renowned signature coloring really with the red outers and the black inner. So you'll always see these riding up and down the road and you know it's a Bush Company tent. Now on that we've got our universal load bars that can attach to the top. For these load bars we also have additional higher feet if you wish to raise them up to clear the solar panels Two versions of Max Trax brackets are available, or tracks or recovery tracks. The one version being the, the bracket that attaches to the load bar, so it's Max Trax to load bar brackets. The other version looks like that, and it's a Max Trax side mount bracket. This effectively can bolt into position on the side of your tent, and you can attach your Max Trax to the side of the tent. We've got solar panel brackets, like you can see attached to the top, which take a variety of solar panels as well as awning brackets like you can see on the side. Now these awning brackets can run in an upward or a downward position and giving you multiple slot adjustments for a multitude of awnings. You don't have to run the Bush Company awnings on these so they'll fit next to anything really. We've got M6 and M8 slots on those. In addition, we've got max tracks, uh, not max tracks, we've got high lift jack brackets. We've got shovel brackets which can also accommodate spades and you can clearly see that on the side yeah. so spades, long handled spades, shovels, long handled shovels, or if you want to run an axe, you can run an axe as well on the side of these. Other than that, we've got spotlight brackets for the front end and even a bottle opener. Guys, thanks for watching this introduction on our new AX27 rooftop tent. I hope it was insightful and I managed to get through everything. For more information and for more the detailed specification, go refer to our website at thebushcompany.com. Thank you for watching and don't forget to go Bush.